theory developers welcome back to hi-fi tech and entertainment channel in my previous video you guys learned how to extend an entity and add the new fields in the services that things you guys learned right in today's video i will explain you how to extend an already implemented services in the captain and also how to change the url pattern and modify the return structure and promise function and also await asynchronous function these all things we will explain in today's video so let's get started first already this is the extended service we have it's there right so within the database file let's see what things are there just previously directly we maintain some base service and here we define the entity in the extension service if you see here extend entity that then we will add at the two fields now instead of this what i will do is here we extended the entity now i will extend the service how to do is first instead of this just i will take some simple entity normal one like entity then entity name orders so some simple entity i have taken it here time step so it will take automatically the current so this is some simple entity i define so consider this is the base service now what i will do is already we created the extend service rest right here instead of extending the entity what we did is we extend the service by adding some new fields and will change the written structure and modify the url pattern so here first we call that base service here then extend service like this base same with like this we need to extend then this is the entity we dependent so just extend service name we need to give extend service yeah here we need to define our existing entity orders on here we are going to call our base entity dot orders expand here whatever the existing fields will be there on this one we need to maintain on top of that the new fields comma like this and new fields we need to add it yes see that's how we need to define it here let's check the id is same oh sorry here it is different that's why now it will come now you can see now it's executed now execute this query yeah now if you see this is the old service and this is the extended service if you see the data let's maintain the data for this data 
and the CSV file. Now I maintain the orders file and I maintain the data. Let's reload it. See, you can see data here and if you go back, check the extended entity, you can see extra fields data, total amount and status. See, that's how we need to maintain. So now you guys learn how to maintain this extended entity, right? Now I will show you how to perform a promise function. To perform a promise function, service.js. So within the custom logic, we need to maintain it here. To maintain this custom logic, first here we need to add some action equal to some actions I defined it here, get orders, then return. I want to return an array of orders. That's how we need to maintain. Now go to here and here we need to maintain our promise function. Yes, you can see here. So previously, if you remember, what I did is just return and I executed this database. But here, now I maintain the promise function. How to maintain the promise function is, first we will call the transaction here. So if you remember, previously I, I called this transaction. How to call this data means here, within the synchronous, I call the read orders data, oh sorry, comma, data and within this, I am selecting within the transaction, I am reading my orders data here in my promise function. If it is success, then I am maintaining the data within the result. If it is in reject case, it will show you the catch method and error, I will get it. So that's how we need to use a promise function. So if you want to use it as an asynchronous weight also, you can do so. What we will do is instead of then instead of then and catch what we will do is we will use try and catch error things so based on your requirement we can maintain the promise function if you are asynchronous operations like database queries external apis and file processing that cases we can manage these operations mainly so previously Maximum I used await of asynchronous, right? If you want to, data will be in return state. Otherwise, if you want to handle some error things, in that scenarios, we will use this. Instead of then and catch, if you want to use asyn asynchronous wait for clear code also, we can do this. What we will do here is just these things will be the same. And instead of new promise directly we will return this and we will maintain the await function i will show you that see see now what i did is i removed that promise function new promise within that we return this right instead of that what i did is just just i'm reading the entity data here just i'm checking if the length is there it will populate a message. If any errors will be there within the entity, it will show you the error message. That's how. So both scenarios will be the same. But here, instead of try and catch, we will use the promise function, new promise. So within instead of returning this line, just we will call this. That's how the difference between promise function and wait asynchronous. Two things will be used based on your requirement. In my next video, I will explain you how to use the UI annotations in our CAPM service to perform the complete full-fetched application. Okay. If you like the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.